Good morning and welcome to another episode of Business Beat with me, Odette. In society, in education, and in business, there's always a dichotomy or a polarization, two sides to the coin when it comes to the business side of things, and science side of things, and of course, art. As parents, we also want our children to focus on mathematics and science and the commercial subjects such as accounting and economics. And we worry if our child is an artist. Is there a space for artists in the business realm in South Africa? Can artists actually make money while they're alive? And what is it that aspiring artists need to know about commercializing their talent? With me this morning are two ladies from the Spear Arts Trust. Um, good morning, Myrna, and good morning, Tamlin. Hi, Edith. Good, good morning, morning Edith. Ladies, art, it's always such a dichotomy. People always seem to think that there is no money, no future, and no business opportunity when it comes to art, artists, and having some kind of creative talent. Talk to us about what it takes to be not just an artist who survives, but an artist who thrives in South Africa. Thank you. Um, I will let Tamlin answer that question because she is an artist herself. But what I know um, in my experience in this role is that it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, almost a calling for somebody to work at it for a very, very long time uh, to become successful as an artist. What um, does success look like for an artist? Is it that they sell many of their pieces and make money? Or is success when they've passed on and suddenly their work is a rarity that costs lots of money? It is. I think it uh, works in both fields, actually. Uh, obviously, for the artist, we'd prefer to be uh, rich and recognized when we're alive. Of course. Um, yeah. But uh, um, obviously, we're creating a product that is sellable and will hopefully increase with um, increase in value with time. Uh, and, and that's just sort of part of what you buy into. Is it possible for an artist to actually commercialize their talent in South Africa? And what do they need to do to be able to realize um, a profit or some money from their talent? I think most artists these days uh, don't just work in a single line. So yes, you'd practice as an artist, you'll make work. But for many artists, it's uh, teaching, um, having some sort of sideline that brings in some extra money so that you can actually stay true to the work that you're creating. Uh, we also require and rely on quite an intricate corporate and business structure within the art market mm -hmm. um, that sort of buys and feeds off and enjoys uh, the, the art that we make. Now, if I were an artist, and let's just say I'm a sculptor, how do I get my work to corporates or to the public? How do I make my pieces available? What do I need to do in order to get it sold or to get it seen? Do I need to contact a gallery? Do I need um, to stand on the street corner? How does it work um, if I have things that I've made and, and I want to get it sold? Well, so the, in, in a traditional sense, there, there is certainly an ecosystem that supports um, an artist's career. And if you don't follow that route, it's so much harder, I think, to um, become known as a, and respected as an artist, but it's not impossible. I think what we find is that um, in terms of the market, there's, galleries can only support so many artists. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more aspiring artists than what the market is able to support um, just from a demand uh, perspective, mm -hmm. within South Africa particularly. So it's quite important for artists at some point in their career to become known internationally. Um, and that is very, very difficult if you don't follow the, the traditional route of doing a solo show at a reputable um, gallery where people will notice your work and hopefully 
um, people will buy it and you mm -hmm. will become known because you have work in a um, well-known collection. So there is a there is a trajectory, but it's not to say that it's impossible to do it right. on your own steam. I think as with any business, um, you know, to make it on your own is very, very hard. So the network is incredibly important and that network does involve engaging with galleries. Um, potentially, originally, the first port of call would be to work with a, a not-for-profit gallery, mm -hmm. um, but a reputable one where your work will be known and then to use social media to your advantage. But you have to be in the ecosystem. Um, it's impossible to do it outside of that, I, I would say. Let's talk about the work that your trust does. What is it exactly that you do for aspiring artists in South Africa? So our purpose is really to facilitate opportunities that come about through engagement with organizations. Um, mm -hmm. And our, our primary, we call them patrons really, um, because they, they impact um, on artists' lives in a, in a large way. So our primary engagement is through Nando's. Um, everybody knows Nando's in South Africa, I think. Um, not everybody knows that they have a really extensive uh, collection of original South African art that is shown in their restaurants around the world. But right. through those yeah. relationships, we are able to engage um, an ecosystem of artist career development programs. Right. Um, we not only purchase works for the collections, but we provide artists with a service in terms of critique, something that is very valuable and not easily accessible once mm -hmm. you are a professional artist. Um, and then also, because we work with artists in a, over a long period of time, strength, strong relationships, um, we're able to see when they are ready for opportunities that may come our way through these um, engagements with the corporate world. Okay. Um, and I think businesses in South Africa really are in a wonderful position to stimulate and to give a, a long-term impact on the creative economy in South Africa mm -hmm. if they are approached um, a lot of their um, needs like having to fit out a building or having to create a space that is welcoming or um, even making people think critically mm -hmm. by engaging with the art world. Um, and yeah, we have examples of businesses that are um, really pioneers in that way. Mm -hmm. And we hope that more businesses will follow suit. What an awesome initiative. So. If I was an aspiring artist wanting to commercialize um, my work or wanting to get my work connected to your network locally and internationally, what is it that I need to do? Um, we run a program at Spear Arts Trust called The Creative Block where we invite artists to apply mm -hmm. uh, to be part of the program and through this program uh, it's basically relationship building. Um, the artist is given blocks on which they can draw or paint or sculpt, uh, basically fashion, um, however sort of suits their practice at the time mm -hmm. and they bring it to a hand in or at the moment we're doing all our hand ins over zoom right. and then the artist receives feedback and it's critical feedback sort of looking at things like concept materials how can they improve their practice and improve a particular sort of issue around what they're working with mm -hmm. um artists that we then consider sort of final and complete will buy on the spot and through that process um, we're able to learn more about the artist their thinking and their practice and to sort of uh, welcome them into the system the ecosystem that we run here um, and through that uh, sort of find opportunities for them when they come up awesome to the artists there is an opportunity for you to commercialize your talent. And if you stay tuned to the morning show, you'll soon see a brand new initiative that is going to launch right here on the morning show, where artists will be showcased, where we, as the morning show, will partner with the Spear Art Trust, 
and we will look at showcasing some of the finest works from South African artists and hopefully through that process, help them sell a piece or two so that they can see the profits in their lifetime. Until next week.